I'm Scott Al Miller. I'm an American expat living abroad for more than 10 years, and I have, end up giving a lot of advice and talking about being an expat, moving to Latin America, and other topics around this because it has generated a lot of interest, right? This was not something I set out to do originally, but living abroad and having a relatively interesting life abroad in many countries with my family of four has led to having a bit of experience in different areas around being an expat and in becoming an immigrant, which I now am, in another country. So there's a lot of subjects around this and a lot of discussion around this. Uh, in general, that's of a bit of interest. But currently, there are so many people in North America that are in many cases, suddenly looking at becoming an expat and wondering if this is something that might make sense for them. A lot of people, especially those who don't want them to become expats, start to approach this, and I've seen this in both the US and Canada, but I'm gonna talk about it from my American perspective, try to portray being an expat as being somehow not something you should do as an American, as if you have a uh, internal obligation to stay in the country uh, borders that you were born in, that the physical location uh, it somehow owes your physical presence, or you should be spending your money only in your own country or it's somehow anti-American to, to move out of the country. And so this is something I really want to address because as an American, um, I find that this is a very, very strange thought process to have gone down. So let's talk about that <laughs> right after the bump. As an American, and most of you who are not Americans but watching this anyway, you will probably understand at least most of these points as to why we associate them with being American. So some topics. We say things like as American as apple pie. We also say things like exercising your right to vote or your right to free speech or your right to own a gun. All of these things we tend to associate with being very American and legitimately they are, especially the apple pie thing. So. In America, we fought really hard to get certain rights. And I'm not arguing whether those rights are good or bad. I'm not arguing if fighting for them was good or bad. I'm not arguing about the history of what, I'm just saying these are things that we associate with and identify that the having fought for, having acquired, having obtained, and exercising those rights, rights to free speech, uh, freedom of the press, uh, right to bear arms, and so forth. These are things that Americans tend to take very seriously. And almost all people will agree that right or wrong, we associate with being Americans. Now, it's always okay to shut up and not talk, or to not read the newspaper, or to not own a gun. You also have the right to not do those things, of course, and that's not anti-American in any way. It's, you're exercising your right to decide to do those things. In that same vein, the United States government over its history, not in the moment today, but the, the entire history of the United States and the projected upcoming new administration completely doubles down on all of this, has always fought hard to get the utmost ability. And we don't always come up number one, but we're always in the top 1%, 2%, that's probably a little bit overselling it, top 3 to 4% for sure, of countries that are able to send their citizens abroad, give their citizens the power to live nearly anywhere in the world, to give them the financial power to be able to live nearly anywhere in the world, and to encourage them to do so and to invest globally, spreading American investment and, to some degree, Americanism around the world. Again, you can argue that maybe this is colonial in nature or in intent. Not everyone who exercises this right would carry on a colonial mentality. And certainly we are not accusing the United States of intentionally creating a colonial mindset, but there is a certain amount of it makes sense, whether for uh, engendering investment opportunities and, and hedging against local market conditions uh, at a national level, uh, to spreading goodwill and and uh, uh, social interactions around the world. But the United States has many really good reasons, both as a society and in representing the government and the state, to want to allow and empower and encourage uh, a certain number of the population to move abroad uh, and a certain percentage of that population to become foreign investors. Now, they do not want the entire population to do this, but that's not a fear. The question is, can we convince 0.1% of the population to do this, or maybe get it to 0.5%, or maybe even get it to 1%, right? These are very small percentage numbers, but the United States is a big country, so it represents a lot of people moving around the world. 1% would still be 3.5 million people. So we're 
definitely large numbers when we're talking about this. While the United States is not as big as China or India, it is in the same general category where we can measure it in handy fractions of a billion. The U.S. is more than a third of a billion people. Sure, that only puts it at a quarter the size of India. It's still pretty big. So it's important to look at this from a what does the uh, government and the state uh, of the United States, this, this sta the sovereign state of the entire nation, look at from a uh, uh, what is good for the, for the country standpoint and what are the rights and privileges that as Americans we are granted? And uh, now I'm not saying right, that we need to be good Americans. That concept itself is very flawed. The idea that we owe something to the place where we were born based on being born there, that would definitely be insanity. And it makes absolutely no sense. You can't defend it in any particular way, right? You're, you're, the people that were your parents happen to be physically present within this arbitrary geographic border. And so the, the majority of the other unrelated people who live within that border should somehow be owed your allegiance. Uh, and in random ways, like you should have to live there, even if they don't like you, like all kinds of weird unrelated things that make no sense whatsoever. You have to be absolutely desperately grasping at straws and willing to throw anything at the wall before you try to convince people to stay in the country that they were born in based on all people everywhere in the world should live in the place where they were physically born. And how far does that go, right? Once you're saying that about a country, it must also logically apply to the state as well. So to be a good Good American, you also couldn't leave your state, but most states are organized into counties. Why would you be allowed to leave your county if you couldn't leave your state? Well, of course you would stay in your county. Well, you must stay in your town. At some point, doesn't it just make sense that it, if you're making that argument, clearly you should never move out of your parents' house. And I assume most people making this argument don't move out of their parents' houses. And that tends to be the basis for why many people go after people who are expats or considering becoming expats is a strong sense of jealousy. People who are able to be expats generally uh, look at that and say, ooh, either I'm, I feel jealousy that you're becoming an expat, I think I'll do that too. Or, oh, that's cool that you want to be an expat, I could totally do that too, I don't want to. I like where I am. I, you know, 340 million Americans are preferring to stay where they are, basically. All Americans have the power to become expats. It's one of the things that America has fought for. You have the economic power in nearly all cases to become an expat. You may not believe it, but you do. And you have the, the political clout as a citizen to go nearly anywhere in the world and live there. These are powers and privileges that the United States government and the United States people have fought, or in most cases worked, really hard to provide. To try to say that the things that our ancestors and our government and our voters and our people and our military and our, our social services and our, our economy have worked so hard to provide to our people are then things that you should feel bad for exercising is nuts and quite easily able to be said super anti-American. There is nothing truly more American. Now, I'm saying there are other things that are equally as American, and I'm not saying being American is always good, but it's really hard to argue with there being many things more American and more in the interest of the United States than becoming an expat. And that is why the United States gives really massive tax incentives for people to become expats. It's not a small incentive. It is a major incentive. And the reason that they do this on one side, we have a whole video where we talk about the, the logic of where the numbers come from and why they do exactly the way that they do. I'm actually, as an American, pretty happy with our tax system. And I know that sounds crazy, but we actually do a pretty good job with this. We, I don't like being taxed worldwide, obviously. For me personally, I'd like to not be taxed at all anywhere, even if I'm living in my country. That's not realistic. I know I have to be taxed. I'm not looking for a perfect world for me that makes no sense. I want a rational world that everyone is treated well. And the United States tax system is honestly not that bad in this regard, there's a lot of things you can complain about about it, has a lot of overhead, a lot of the rich people manage to get away without paying their fair share, not as much as I think people think, but it's still, it's a lot, like, it's, it's not a great system, but when it comes to expats, to normal everyday expats, the benefits and the tuning that the system does, one, is actually a great system, and when I talk to people from other countries, it is rare to find someone from another country who actually gets treated in the real world as well as Americans do from their tax regime, and the system is very clearly 
beyond a shadow of a doubt, designed to encourage expatting. And that's how tax systems are built the world over. Tax systems are built to tax activities that the government wants to make money on and to give breaks to things that the government wants to promote, that they want to encourage. And of course, if millions and millions and millions of Americans, it would have to be many millions, ran out and said, oh my gosh, this tax advantage is so good, I want to leverage it and ran out and leveraged it, then the government would probably say, okay, that's, that's enough. Enough people have done that. We're going to start cranking down the benefits. They're going to, have to shut them off. They're going to slowly bring them down until people stop becoming expats at the pace that was too much. And that's an easy tuning, and most governments do this. So the United States makes it incredibly easy to deal with this, this encouragement system, and it makes it uh, very obvious, very clear that the government of the United States has in the past and intends to in the future really heavily favor expatting. And again, if, if too many people did this, you never have to worry about this, but what if everybody did it? Everyone fled out of the country. Clearly that's not happening, right? This amount of encouragement, which is a lot, isn't enough to move large numbers of people. Everyone has heard of someone who's an expat, but very few people are aware of all their friends and neighbors becoming expats. Maybe you have lots of friends and neighbors kicking around the idea and that worries the government that there may be a sudden outflow that they were not expecting, but that is incredibly unrealistic. At the scale of the United States, both those kinds of things don't really happen, and the government does have deep information to have a pretty good idea of when that would trigger, if it ever would. Right? They would be very unlikely to be caught unawares of that happening. They would have warning through a lot of mechanisms, including just social media monitoring, right? simple things, but also deep, complex mathematical models that tell them how the, the large-scale populace is going to react uh, to certain tunings. These are standard things that governments do, but the United States really does probably, most likely, better than any other government, if not really close to the best. So they're, they're not going to be caught unaware. So this is a super American activity from a political and state uh, standpoint and from a supporting other Americans standpoint, in the same vein as going out and voting. In fact, I would argue that it's way more American than voting because the voting is a facade in most cases, but going Going abroad is a very real activity. Using your powers, leveraging your rights and privileges as an American is the most American thing you can do. That's a great way, I think, to think of it. Anything, in any country, right, that has fought hard, worked hard to create special privileges for its citizens, they did so because they want their citizens to be able to leverage that and at least in some degree to, to actually leverage that. Otherwise, we wouldn't have people out there fighting and dying in wars. We wouldn't have people working really, really hard and expending loads of national resources to create these benefits to then have people go, oh, thanks for thanks for the unbelievable investment that this country made in this thing that I'm going to just ignore. Or worse, try to browbeat my neighbors into not leveraging. Right now, that's, that's super anti-American. That is a fear response, right? That is a jealousy response. And, and we do see this a lot. There's, there's two things that I think really drive this. And this is speculation, but one is straight up jealousy. There is a lot, there's a lot of people who feel they can't move abroad. Now, like I said, nearly all Americans technically have the power to move abroad. Some may be completely unaware of what that power is, how to do it. So that, that makes sense, right? There's a whole bunch of like, oh, I've never considered being an expat. I've never looked into it. I don't know anyone who has. I don't know who to ask. Of course, you're watching my show, so it doesn't apply to you. But people you know who may be upset or, or have an emotional reaction to you becoming an expat, that jealousy can easily come from this feeling of not knowing what to do, having no idea that they have the power to move abroad, and in a few cases may actually not have the power to move abroad. That's super, super rare. If you have the capability of feeding yourself in America, chances are you can live decently well somewhere else in the world. Maybe not baller, but you'll be able to survive. That's just nearly a given. But there are many people who, who just, they feel that that barrier is there. And so you'll have that emotional reaction of jealousy, right or wrong. Or they may have some ties to family and just cannot leave their family behind. Maybe they're, they, they have family members they have to take care of and they're not able to, like there's reasons other than financial that people wouldn't be able to move. Uh, but but that, that jealousy feeling, that's one aspect. And the other is the people who 
wish they could move, are scared. I think this is actually the bigger group. The, the people who, basically, if you're doing any research, if you're actually passionate about becoming an expat, chances are you can make it happen. Maybe not today, but within the reasonable future. And I know people who, who are in positions that are relatively struggling to become an expat, and they're making it happen with a little bit of effort. They're pushing, and they're like, I can do this, right? I may not be able to go to Monte Carlo and, and live in a mansion, but I can get to another country and, and have a life that I'm picking and, and, and retune things and, and just explore my options. And Americans almost always have the power to do that. And that's fantastic. That is as American as American gets. But so many people are just scared. The thing that they are jealous of is the bravery, is the confidence, is the ability to manage change, to take on adventure, to do something new, to not not have their parents standing there taking care of them. Of course, many people move their parents. Do that, right? Convince your parents to go with you if that's what you need, right? So many people just don't have the capacity themselves, no matter how much money they have, no matter how much uh, a job capability they have, they don't have the mental strength to make that leap, to have their life change, to not have a social support framework that they're used to. It's not that you won't have one. It's that you have to have a new one, that you have to develop new friends. And of course, some people are like, well, Sure, I would like to live in France, but I have all these great friends in, in St. Louis, so I don't want to be away from my friends. I prioritize being close to my friends over... Great, that's making a choice, right? That's saying I have something in the United States that I won't have somewhere else. For us, nearly all of our family and friends moved somewhere far away so that being overseas or in the country made very little difference as to how long it takes to get to see them or how hard it is to get to see them. When I lived in the United States, my father lived 20 seven hours drive away, right? Did we do that? Yes, we did that. But we can fly up now for very similar time and money as driving to see him was in the United States, which is to say it's still a big effort to go there, but it's not a bigger effort to go there from here. So, so there's, there's things that you can, you can consider about that. But for us, that was a big, big thing that almost all of our friends moved away. Uh, my best friend moved to Belgium almost every, you know, when we, we lived in Texas and almost all of our friends, uh, ended up being far away, whether it's a six hour drive or, or across the ocean or whatever. So the, the ties that we had were very low. So the ability to move abroad made a lot of sense, right, right, in a lot of ways. So that's just a tuning thing. Had we had really good, strong friend groups that we saw every day uh, in our local community in the United States, it would have been much harder to make the decision to move away. So a lot of people will, for that reason, not move. But that doesn't generally create jealousy, not strong jealousy. That's weak jealousy, right? That's a little bit like, oh, I wish I could do that, but this thing's better for me. And, and you know, I, I don't really want the life that you have because you should be jealous that my friends are close and I get to see them all the time. That's a bigger priority, uh, at least for me. Um, so, right, th that doesn't tend to make people really upset. They still might be like, man, I wish I could go live in France or whatever. Yeah, of course. Everybody wishes they could have everything in life and nobody can. So it's all about choices and most of us understand that. But there's a lot of people who don't have those things. They don't have those support groups. I have in regular comments from these people, right? And they <clears throat> get very jealous when someone else has the bravery to move away. And then there's one more group, and that is the group who, whether it's true or not, believes that expats leaving somehow takes away their resources. And this is what I saw in one of the posts that I just got. Someone was very adamant that the money that I earn from my job really belongs to him. And not from a government perspective, right? The United States government chooses what percentage of my taxes go to the government, which doesn't. Like, there's a whole system for this, and everybody has the same system, more or less. I know you're going to say, well, the rich don't. Okay, but if you were rich, you would be treated the same as the rich, if that makes sense. <clears throat> but at different price points, everybody's treated the same. With the same actions, everyone's treated the same. Like, that is a good thing about how the IRS works. And so this person who's saying these things, they have the power to become an expat and have the same benefits and do the same things and be taxed in the same way. They're not without those privileges, they're still an American with those things, but they truly felt that they were a welfare recipient, not necessarily the official welfare system, but a recipient of my money, and that I shouldn't have the right to the ownership of my own income, because it belonged to him. And I found this, and, and he used this, it's American, to pay for him, was his, was his argument. And honestly, it's hard to imagine something that most Americans, if you explain it to, would agree is less American 
than claiming the exercising of America's rights and privileges that doing the thing that is specifically being as encouraged as possible, as reasonable, by the government and the voters and the public and the tax system, and having property ownership and encouraging investment and keeping your own money and, and lowering taxes, um, of being like, that's the most American thing reasonably you can describe. You can describe other things that are about as American, but that's a super American thing, right? Every aspect of that is super American, but he wanted that the rights and privileges of being an American not be allowed to be exercised. Oh, sure, you got the right to bear arms, but you're not allowed to have a gun. What does that mean? Or you shouldn't have a gun. Mm, that's not what that law means, right? Oh, sure, you got freedom of speech, but no one, it would be anti-American to talk. And that doesn't sound very American. That sounds very scared, uh, right? And then to say, oh, the United States has gone through all this effort. We fought for, we've worked for these powers. We want to encourage Americans to go around the world for lots of different reasons. This is good for everyone, everyone benefits. But this scared guy, and there's a lot of scared guys like this, they don't know where their next meal is coming from. They're not holding down a job. And that's legit. Like, people are struggling with jobs today. People are scared today. The world is changing and everything's scary. And a lot of these people are developing this fear reaction to the idea of other people expatting. Of course, some of it's jealousy. These people have the financial power to move abroad. They have the ability to get work abroad. They have the bravery to go abroad. And now they perceive it as taking their their paycheck abroad because obviously we have uh, this tax advantage and we're spending our money somewhere else. So they perceive that as their social support checks not coming in the mail anymore or in the future not being enough of it or that they're getting less because we've moved abroad. So lots of problems with that, right? One, literally he's describing really loosely organized communism. Right. That's super communist. And if you're a communist and that's what you think is good, like just own it and and argue, hey, I think communism is a great thing. Therefore, uh, I think you should uh, have to give everything you own to the state and then they'll they'll hand it out to the people as needed. If that's what you believe and that's the system that you want to support. Do so honestly. Say that's what you support. Don't say it's anti-American to not be communist. Don't, don't try to pretend. Like, like say you want to change what America is and then, and then go out and convince people that that's what you want to do. That's the American way, right? Go out and convince, with your freedom of speech, people uh, that, that your idea of communism is better than the American idea of property ownership, of personal property ownership, and, and get voters to change the system. Now, I know that's really hard, and I know the vote isn't super uh, direct, and, and there's lots of reasons to be frustrated with that system, but don't try to claim that if we're not communist, we're not American. That's just that's just BS, right? Stop being scared and move past that. So this is a little bit of a personal message to the scared guy on my channel trying to trying to push uh, his agenda on the world by claiming communism is American. But it's a uh, this is something that you guys need. And what, this is OK if you're Canadian, right? I've seen the same thing. They try to say that as Canadians, you owe it to other Canadians to stay behind, be a prisoner and that your property is their property. Literally, that's what people have said. And I have lots of Canadians who said to me, yeah, my neighbors say this stuff to me. Maybe not in those words. But that's exactly what they're saying. They're saying that it's not, uh, they're not being loyal to their neighbors. They deserve to be stuck. They deserve to not exercise the freedoms that Canada has put in place uh, for the, because the Canada has gone through similar effort. I don't think as much as the United States. Like, I'm super happy being an American in this particular regard. It's one of the best things about being an American. It's really hurtful as an American to have someone claiming to be an American and try to take that bit of Americanism away from me. Like, holy cow, that's the best thing. I mean, it's not the best thing, but it's a really great thing about being American and saying that the best things, you know, to be an American, you have to not act like an American. You have to not use those things. It's just horrible, right? And, you know, from a very personal perspective, <laughs> My family was on the first boat to the Dutch colony at New York. My wife's family was on the first boat to the New England colonies. Uh, I don't think that being on the first boat should give anyone any more Americanism than anyone else, and certainly no one is more American than Native Americans who were there before the boats arrived. Like I'm 100% on board with that. But if you're looking at colonial or European-inspired American culture, 
Our family's been here the longest. My kids come from two first boat colonials, and millions of Americans do. This is not unique. This is not special. But there are, when people are talking about what it means to be American, America does not define who I am. Quite literally, I define who America is. I and 350 million other of you who are Americans go out every day and define what it means to be American. Having one guy go against 350 million people and say his personal idea of self-fulfilling communism is what makes someone American is a weird, weird argument but one that we hear from so many people. So the reason that I'm giving this video, yes, it helps me to vent a little bit and I feel better about myself. And I wanna take a little moment because it's easy to get down on America these days and be like, oh, America this, America that, and this and that. And yeah, there's reasons to be depressed. There's reasons to be unhappy. There's also remaining reasons to be really proud of aspects of our heritage. There's really good reasons to be super proud of the economic power that has been uh, engendered, the, uh, uh, the freedoms to move abroad. The greatest freedom that Americans have is our power to go around the world, quite literally. It is the least curtailed of our freedoms. It is the most extensive of our freedoms. You can talk about freedom of speech and of the press and of religion and of a right to bear arms, which we don't normally classify as a freedom, but it is, it's one of those. And you talk about all those things. None of them actually has the power to be exercised quite as extensively. None of them is encouraged in any way whatsoever to be practiced as extensively as the power and right to move and live and work and invest around the world. And in exchange for that incredible, incredibly powerful bit of American rights and privileges of Americanism, of Americana, is in exchange, we have a worldwide tax regime that requires, should we be financially successful beyond a reasonable level around the world, that we will still have to pay taxes. And we still have to pay a little bitty bit of taxes no matter what. And we always have to file taxes. And we have to register a whole bunch of stuff whenever we do. We do a lot of work to be proper, fully registered expats living around the world. Honestly, it seems like a pretty reasonable exchange. United States makes more money, gets influence and power around the world, hedges against local markets, and is able to shed some of its population from needing to be dependent on the infrastructure and food and water inside the U.S. borders. Those are all things that are beneficial to everyone. So I want you as Americans, Canadians, or others who are living in a country where you have scared or jealous neighbors and friends and family who are trying to hurt you, who are trying to find a way to make false claims and try to make you feel less like a good person uh, through mechanisms like this, to have some background, to have a little bit of knowledge to come out and say, well, hold on a minute, let's talk about being American for a moment. Let's see who's really thinking in terms of America rather than just being self-centered and trying to be dishonest and anti-patriotic and anti-American in order to try to harm America and you personally by making you feel bad for being too American in a really good way? I mean, that's one of the great things. This is one of those things about being American that nobody can say something negative about, right? You can, people argue about whether free speech is actually good. People argue if freedom of religion is actually good. People argue if freedom of the press is good. People certainly are arguing if the right to bear arms is good. That's a pretty regular argument. Nobody, nobody has an argument against the power of being an expat. People who are jealous get angry, but the voters, the government, educated people, not one of them says, oh yeah, but there's some negatives to that, no. This is a powerful, healthy system. It's good for America, it's good for Americans, it's good for foreign countries, it's good for the, the citizens of foreign countries. When done well, of course, if you're a bad person, bad things follow you wherever you go, that's not the point. It's not that you can't do something bad as an expat. The act of being an expat on its own is good and healthy for everybody involved. America goes through great lengths to let you go and to promote you going, and any country you're going to move to has permitted you to come. They, both sides, 
have made political decisions that this is good for them. The governments of both countries have analyzed the situation and decided that one is willing to let you leave, and in this case of the United States, they're encouraging you to leave. In the case of Canada, they're just neutral, as far as I can tell. Uh, in, in whatever country you're coming into, so Nicaragua, where I live, they go through great lengths to encourage you to come here, to uh, financially incentivize you to come, in the same way that the United States financially incentivize you to go. So they're very much on the exact same page. Each country does its own incentives and, in some cases, advertising. Mexico and Costa Rica famously run ads in the United States to encourage people to come to their countries, often as tourists, but they know that a certain percentage of tourists are going to fall in love and decide to stay or return and, and maybe move in the future. So those kinds of things are all tunings that countries do to encourage you to come. So both sides uh, have this big economic analysis or, or social analysis where at the government levels they're looking at these things and deciding how much they're going to encourage you to come, how much they're going to encourage you to go, and so forth. So instead of looking at it as something that you're taking advantage of, that somehow you're using a loophole in the system, that is the farthest thing from the truth. Don't let people say that to you. Point out, you're doing exactly what your government wants you to do. Chances are you're doing exactly what the government you're going to wants you to do. You're doing the most American thing. You're doing the right thing. You don't have to know why. For some reason, your government has made it a point of encouraging you to do this because they feel this is what's good for the American people. And why would you avoid doing the best thing for the American people if it's also what's good for you personally? Of course, always make your own decisions. And you don't need to do things just because they're good for the American people. That's not exactly why we exist. We're not here for the purpose of serving the state. Again, that would be communism. And it's okay if that's what you believe, but own it. Don't try to claim that it's Americanism. As Americans, we're very much out for the, the, the benefit of the individual. And that's not always good, and that sounds terrible to say, but that is the tuning of the American political system, the tuning of the American rights and privileges system, is that we prioritize individuals having uh, a lot of power to go out and do what's right for them, often at the cost of greater society again, agree or don't agree with whether that's the right thing for our, our country to be tuned on, but you can't disagree that that is what the country is tuned on. So even though being an expat may be the best thing for society, even though uh, moving abroad may help everybody involved, you still should evaluate and not do it if it isn't the right thing for you and your family. Look out for you guys first. But if what is good for you also is good for everyone else, why would you avoid it? Don't let some people who are jealous or bitter or, or really into communism, I guess, uh, try to dissuade you from doing the right thing for you. All right, go out there and do what's good for you. Be good Americans. Be good expats. If you have questions or comments, don't comment something nasty because you're jealous. Don't comment because you're scared. Unless your question is, how do you become less scared? How do you stop being jealous? How do you make this leap? And instead of being angry with other people for being able to leverage their American privileges, get down there and ask us how you can overcome the barriers that you might have. Lots of people start scared and maybe jealous, but the healthy reaction is not to lash out. I know that's the way we feel emotionally, but instead of lashing out, say, can I make my life better too? Could I also be a good American, move abroad, be a good expat, and make my own life better too? Like, be good for everyone in the same way? Yes, you probably can. Ask, let's talk about it. That'd be a great conversation to have. Let's help people overcome that instead of, instead of having a negative reaction. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.